Today I want to talk about the structure and function of DNA as well as its replication. This piece of art by Bill Sanderson kind of seeks to illustrate that DNA is the thread that unites all life on Earth, that all of us have this molecule inside us, and we share this with all of the animals, plants, and other organisms found on Earth. This name, DNA, stands for deoxyribonucleic acid that if we look at an organism such as yourself, organisms are made of cells which contain these large structures called chromosomes. Each chromosome is a large structure made of compacted DNA. It was first discovered in 1869 by a Swiss physician and biologist named Frederick Miescher who isolated DNA from white blood cells that he collected from wounded victims of uh, war and so forth, that he took these white blood cells and through a series of steps, he got rid of most of the outer material of the cell itself. Alcohol got rid of the cell membranes, pepsin, a protein-breaking enzyme, broke down the rest of the material. When you immersed it in a base, the nuclei swelled up, and when you added acid, the DNA was left behind as an impure white powder. This is what we've discovered in the 150 or so years since Miescher's discovery, that the structure of DNA is actually a double helix that is like a, uh, a twisted spiral staircase, two strands wrapping around each other. That if we actually look at the molecules that make up this DNA structure, we find that there are carbons, shown here as dark gray, hydrogen, shown as white, oxygens, shown as red, nitrogens as blue, and phosphorus as this golden brown. That DNA itself contains instructions in large blocks called genes, that these genes contain bases, A's, T's, C's, and G's. These chemical bases make up the instructions for making certain molecules called proteins in your cells. Each gene codes for a different kind of protein, therefore. You have approximately 15 to 20,000 genes in your DNA and can therefore make a similar number of proteins. That the sequence of these bases codes for different kinds of amino acids, amino acids being these individual structures that make up the entire protein itself. Each different sequence of three bases in the DNA makes a or I should say codes for a different amino acid in the final product. So by changing the sequence of bases, you code for a different sequence of amino acids and therefore a different protein with a different shape and function. There are a number of components of DNA that we can see here. The, the first thing is to analyze the structure. It is a double helix. This is one chain and this is the other. That these chains are made of alternating sugars and phosphates. In between them, we have these bases that form pairs. The bases follow certain rules that these cytosines always bond with guanines on the other chain, the adenines always bond with thymines on the other chain. If we actually look at the structure in more detail, we find that DNA is a polynucleotide, poly just meaning many, this is one nucleotide right here. If we zoom in on the molecular structure, what we find that a nucleotide is made of a phosphate, a sugar, and a base of some sort like thymine or adenine or cytosine or guanine. That the uh, polynucleotide might be 5 million or so nucleotides in length. A polynucleotide is also called a nucleic acid. DNA is one type of nucleic acid. RNA is another. When we say that DNA is anti-parallel, what we mean is there are two strands of DNA and they happen to run side by side but in opposite directions as shown by these arrows. So when we actually look at the structure of DNA, this is one strand, this is the other, we can see that the backbones of these are oriented in opposite directions. As well, these base pairs always follow certain rules. This is, again, one nucleotide, a phosphate, a sugar called deoxyribose, and a base. That this pair is uh, formed because of an attraction, a magnetic attraction between these two. 
These magnetic attractions result in hydrogen bonds between bases on opposite strands that A's always form hydrogen bonds with T's, C's always form hydrogen bonds with G's, A's forming two, C's and G's uh, forming three. So, based on this, we find that if you know the sequence of bases on one strand, you can figure out the sequence of bases of the missing strand, that this A is going to bond with a T, this C is going to bond with a G, and so on. These nucleotides are free-floating in the cytoplasm that if you need to replicate DNA to make a new strand, you can just grab the components from the cytoplasm itself. These triple phosphates right here are kind of like a battery pack. They give uh, this energy uh, to this reaction of forming a bond, so they kind of bring their own energy for the reaction to occur. So, when you want to replicate the DNA, all you have to do is unwind it to separate the two strands from each other, and then just put in the complementary bases to form the other, the missing strand, creating two new double helices from when there was uh, only one. So, each strand, therefore, is acting as a template for the formation of a new complementary double helix. That this is the original DNA, you pry apart the two strands, and then just match up the complementary bases for each of the strands, therefore creating two new molecules, which are half uh, old and half new. You can see that these, these bases here are exactly the same as the original one that you started with, due to the rule of complementary base pairing. We refer to this as semi-conservative DNA replication. Uh, conservative means that it stays the same. Semi-conservative implies that it stays half the same. That when you actually pry apart these two strands and line up the complementary bases and then get two new double helix, uh, the helices, that each of these is part way old and part way new, therefore semi-conservative, half conservative, half conserving the original DNA strand and uh, half being completely new. There are a number of enzymes, little proteins, that help carry out this process. It doesn't happen spontaneously very quickly at all. These proteins help this, uh, this replication occur. The first enzyme is helicase. You know this is an enzyme because it has this ASE ending. Helicase goes along this helix and unzips it. It pries apart the hydrogen bonds. Then you have an enzyme called polymerase, which goes along and makes the new complementary DNA strand. You can see these are working in opposite directions to each other. The last thing is that sometimes you get these little breaks where these fragments have been made but not joined together by polymerase. So there's another enzyme called ligase which comes in and stitches these together as necessary. So these molecules, these enzymes can travel along the entire length of DNA in a matter of an hour to uh, two hours in your body and replicate all of the DNA that you have, all three billion or so base pairs. The last step is referred to as proofreading. What that means is there's, there are enzymes that check for a mismatch. If you see this A and G don't belong together, so what this protein will do is alert others to come in and snip out the offending mismatched bases, and then polymerase comes along and replaces this section that is missing with the correct sequence of bases. This way, DNA replication has a, an incredibly low rate of making mistakes, that the DNA is almost exactly the same as you began with. Out of the three billion or so bases that you have, on average, only one mistake is made every time that DNA is replicated. So, in summary, DNA contains instructions called genes, which code for proteins, the, the DNA is a double helix with two strands that are anti-parallel, and these anti-parallel strands are connected by hydrogen bonds. That this molecule is a polymer made of many monomer subunits, these nucleotides as they're called, each of which is made of a phosphate, a sugar called deoxyribose, and a base, either adenine or guanine or thymine or cytosine. These bases always pair in certain ways, A's always pair with T's, C's always with G's. The replication of DNA therefore becomes quite simple, that uh, you take apart the strands using helicase to break these hydrogen bonds, 
then a DNA polymerase comes in and constructs a new uh, complementary strand and ligase joins together the backbones of these nucleotides as necessary. That this DNA replication results in two new double helices, each with one old strand and one new strand. And just to make sure that no mistakes have been made, proofreading occurs so that you get uh, any mistakes corrected.